Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Don Rose U.S. Commodities, and it was a down day and all, but a few of the hog contracts. And Don, let's start off talking a little bit about the grain trade and some of the reaction that we saw to the WASDE report. Uh, corn, soybean yield going up, which is against historical trends, and the market kind of reflected that a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, it really did. I mean, historically, when the uh, crops get smaller from August to September, September to October, uh, we have a tendency to get smaller again in the uh, November report. Didn't happen this time. The whisper number was uh, higher yields on uh, corn and soybeans. And we've seen some privates with some higher numbers. So it wasn't a complete uh, shock out here. But, you know, the market did react uh, negative technically to a market. And, um, you know, that's just a market that's on hold watching the uh, weather in South America. So talk about corn since we did take out the summer low. Where do we project to now? Yeah, we took out the summer low, uh, September low, and uh, September corn went off the board uh, on a low day of 455 and three quarters was the low. So that's the downside target, I think, on the continuation charts, Michelle. And in the big picture, uh, 450, uh, 455 is going to be the big support zone. Of course, the upside uh, still remains very elusive, but that uh, 480, 481 just is a tough number to get over on December corn. Yeah, especially when you're knocking on the door of 2.2 carryover, right? Yeah, you know, that's the big problem. In fact, the U.S. carryover 2.2 billion, like you said, that's a adequate to surplus number. And even more than that, when you look at the global picture, uh, our global stocks of corn are at five-year highs, uh, over 12 billion bushels. So, I mean, that's uh, one that we're lugging around corn. We're going to need some help to improve that balance table. That's either going to have to come from South America weather or it's going to have to come from acre changes uh, next year uh, in uh, in the U.S. is what I would say right now, Michelle. Yeah. Um, and soybeans, again, a little bit bigger yield, 0.3 bushels per acre. And usually we go down from the October to the November WASD. So is that a little bit of a surprise, you think? Yeah, I think a little bit of a surprise. We had some, you know, again, these yields were just very variable. The Eastern Corn Belt, of course, was a big winner on better yields. Um, you know, the Western Corn Belt was very variable, um, you know, and the uh, soybeans, the government did, you know, they've been whacking the uh, demand side of the market, particularly exports on these uh, reports, but they kind of held steady this time, I think, with the South America weather pattern the way it is. And, you know, we've got a 245 million carry out, not really bearish. Um, you know, it says that we've got adequate, but, you know, we're on the razor's edge here if South America mm -hmm. has any issues. So um, it was a report that was negative, but we didn't really have a knockout punch. Still tells us on January beans, we're probably in a 13 to $14 trading range. Uh, we're sitting about in the middle of that right now. Yeah, and beans also faded the big export sales that came at the market, but we had kind of already priced that in, didn't we? like we say, the ships kind of talk. And I think there was a lot of uh, a lot of belief that there, we were going to see some big export announcements. We had the buying group in uh, the United States. We have uh, Biden going to meet with uh, Xi uh, next week. And I think there was a feeling that we'd see some big sales. So I think it wasn't a huge surprise, although you always like to see a number when you see big export sales. I mean, um, between uh, China and the unknown, 60 million bushels, I mean, in one chunk, that's a lot. Um, you like to react more positive than we did, certainly. But uh, the report won, uh, won the day today, Michelle. Yeah, it did. Um, as we go forward, though, how long do we trade this news? Because South American weather still is um, something that we need to put a little more weather premium into this market, you think? Well, you know, I think when you look at it right now today, you saw what happened with uh, Argentina last year when they had their drought. They're much smaller than uh, Brazil. Uh, soybean meal uh, made a, a new contract highs this year, although later. Uh, same thing's going to happen with Brazil. If they get into a big problem, you know, it's going to be an, a market that can turn explosive here. Um, you know, and I think probably the thing to watch is watch China to see how many soybeans they buy. That'll probably mm -hmm. tell us how concerned that they are. But as of right now, it looks like next week, this temperature is uh, 95 to over 100 most days little rain. And then uh, I think the trade's banking that the weather uh, pattern gets a little wetter after that. We'll see. But it's going to be a weekend of weather uh, almost every weekend going forward, Michelle. Absolutely. But you got to believe China might be a little bit concerned here, Don, with um, coming at the market. Did we do any technical damage to beans like we did corn? 
Yeah, we really did. You know, on uh, the technical stuff that we follow, uh, a close under this uh, 1352 on January soybeans is not what we wanted to see. So um, before you can go up, I think now we have to repair the charts. And like we always say, before you go up, you have to quit going down. So let's see how we react, uh, you know, technically. If we can't get some follow through selling, that's probably a sign that, uh, you know, this market is not one of those that wants to leak lower. Uh, wheat market also ending lower. Of course, we did see a 14 million bushel bump up in U.S. ending stocks, a little bit um, higher global ending stocks. But, you know, the, the narrative really hasn't changed much in that market, has it, Don, in terms of us not being competitive in the global market? No, we're, you know, and that's the problem, Michelle. We're not competitive in the world market. And even more, I mean, uh, probably the telling tale on the uh, the balance sheet was the fact that imports of wheat, if you can believe, went up 10 million bushels. Uh, yeah. uh, our big competitor, Russia, their uh, production went up 5 million metric tons. So um, the exporter stocks went up on this report. And, um, you know, it's just Russia really just continues to pound away selling wheat below the world market prices, uh, frustrating the U.S., of course, but also Europe. Yeah, and it comes at a time when we are seeing some global production issues, at least in the southern hemisphere, aren't we? Oh, most definitely. I think probably the biggest one that we have is India. Of course, you know, they've got a tremendous amount of people to feed, but their uh, wheat uh, supplies, their stocks continue to sink. And then, of course, we've got the uh, El Nino uh, dry drought condition in Australia. And of course, we knew uh, we know we were too wet in Argentina for a long time. So, yeah, it's the southern hemisphere that is really on the uh, watch list. And that's going to be the one that we're probably going to have to watch going forward if we can uh, lift this wheat market up off of these lows. Uh, watch again, China. Uh, see if they buy some soft red wheat. They've been buying wheat when we get down into that 550 on uh, soft red winter wheat in the nearby, Michelle. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, cattle market, boy, a tough close. And the technicals look horrible, but we did have lower cash trade to push it as well. How much lower do you think we're going to go here, Don? Well, technically, you know, some uh, downside objectives on the uh, February on some of these models is uh, 174. So we went down under that a little bit. So let's see if that can hold. But, you know, the plus, uh, the negative on the cattle is the funds got caught long. Of course, the the trade has been just basically overly positive, probably on the cattle market here for uh, uh, months, uh, many months. And, uh, you know, now you've got a little bit different structure. Uh, maybe at these lower levels, we can sell the beef. The beef demand's been slow. Um, cash market's been coming down, but we have discounts in the futures market now. So the structure's much different. Hedge cattle are moving, but uh, the government on the USDA report back to that, they said fourth quarter cash cattle 185, we're under that. And they're saying most of next year up and down, but uh, 186 average. So, um, you know, they're not saying that this cattle market is just going to fall apart completely. All right. So like you said, you don't think there's a lot of downside risk here necessarily. You know, I, I think if the, you know, the downside risk is going to be on the demand side. Um, gotcha. I think technically we've done enough to the downside, Michelle. And the hog market, um, we did hold together a little bit better there than we did in the cattle market. But, you know, we got above the 50% retracement levels from a technical standpoint, you know, how much farther do you think we can take that market here and what is really driving it right now? Well, you know, I think the big thing is the uh, hog market had the, uh, uh, what's going on in the cattle market here a few months back. I mean, just a huge amount of liquidation, uh, big losses in the hog industry all the way around the vertical integrators, the small and medium people. Um, so that liquidation uh, basically I think is coming to a close that means uh, better times uh, next year sometime as uh, the supplies uh, change a bit. And, you know, at these lower levels, Michelle, what's really happening is demand starting to switch over more to pork versus the beef, which I think the pork people were uh, hopeful that at some point it, in time it would. And it looks like, you know, that that's uh, what is occurring right now. Seasonally, hogs are positive during the month of November into the 1st of December. We got to get this cash to catch, though, don't we? Yeah, you know, the cash market is, uh, you know, is just one that's a, a bit of an issue here. Um, and that just continues to uh, go with the line of liquidation, too much pork mm -hmm. in the pipeline. Um, you know, for every action, there's an overreaction. So be careful, um, you know, getting too negative the hog market, um, particularly with all the liquidation that's taken place. Someplace in 24, things should look better. But like you say, um, over there before you can get too positive, you have to see the supply size shrink a little bit. 
Yeah, supply has been really upfront. Supply has been pretty strong here, especially compared to a year ago on slaughter numbers. Okay, thanks so much, Don Rose, U.S. Commodities. That is Markets Now.